Today, we're turning this into this over the course of one year. I onboarded it into my environment. I repotted it a couple of times. I gave it a moss pile. I upgraded the moss pile. I had to deal with thrips. I dropped it and a couple of petioles snipped. I had to move house and it had to move out of the IKEA cabinet. So a lot happened over the course of 12 months. And in today's video, we're going to look at all of it. Hey everybody and welcome back to our YouTube channel. Yes, it's our YouTube channel. You guys know proof is in the pudding and in today's video we're taking it to the next level. I'm not just showing you a nice looking plant. No, we're looking at this plant's journey over the course of the last 12 months because exactly one year ago I received this plant in the mail and it was the tiniest little tissue culture plant. Spoiler alert, this plant and I have gone through quite a bit over the last 12 months. There was definitely some ups and downs and some challenges, but really can't complain about the end result. Before we hear from Jan from the past, Jan from the present and Jan from the future would really appreciate your support. These videos take quite a bit of time to create, well, 12 months to be precise. So I would really appreciate if you give this video a thumbs up, leave a nice comment, share it with people that would maybe be interested in this video and if you haven't already subscribed to my channel. Engaging with my content is the best way for you guys to support me. It doesn't cost you anything but honestly it means the world to me. Anyway, let's take it back to 12 months ago. Hello! I love getting plant mail. Now I haven't really been getting that many plants or at least not through the post. Like most of my plants I get from, from AJ's anyway. Uh, every now and then I see something online and I can't resist. Now let's have a look at what's in here. Today is Friday. It was in the post all week and they tried to deliver it yesterday and I was home and then they gave me like the little card to collect it from the post office. So I was a bit pissed off because it spent another day in this box and it really didn't have to, but it is what it is. Uh, it's the second time I ordered from this uh, particular seller. Uh, they're a seller in Western Australia and they do tissue culture really well. And last time I bought from them, I bought my El Choco Red and I absolutely love it. It was such a good purchase, great quality, um, and the El Choco is just having the best time ever. By the way, it's really nicely packaged as well. Um, so it's a, the company is called Flora Magnifica. It's not sponsored. They don't know I ordered from them. I paid for it with my own money. It is a tiny plant. You guys know I love getting a tiny plant uh, and growing it to maturity myself. So I thought, why not record all of this and show you the whole process of me getting a plant and then onboarding it into my home and trying to get it to establish and grow well in my environment as soon as possible. So here it is. <laughs> it's so tiny, I need to really come closer, I think. But it is a tiny, Philodendron Florida beauty. What a beauty, mate. Where are you? Isn't this just the most adorable? It's so tiny. Oh my God, I love this. So they give you a little care guide for your little tissue cultured plantlets. Me, however, <laughs> I'm gonna do my own thing. <laughs> And whatever I've done with the El Choco worked a treat. So I'm just planning on repeating the same process. So I don't really want to int introduce more shock to the plant because it was just in a box. It's a tiny plant, so it's quite vulnerable. So really what I want to do right now is I just want to pop this in my IKEA cabinet as soon as possible because the IKEA cabinet has pretty much perfect conditions for it to thrive in. So I'll pop it in there first, I'll let it, you know, establish itself in there, overcome all of the shock. And then, I mean, I can see that there's a new leaf already pushing out. I suppose once that new leaf comes out, fully unfurls, and I can see, start seeing another leaf coming, I know that it's happy. And that's probably when I'm gonna plan on repotting it from this teeny tiny pot as well. I'll do want to check the roots, however, of course, quick root check. And you can see there's some tiny roots there. 
So, I'm gonna do zero with this. It doesn't need watering because the medium still has enough moisture. It wasn't sent bare rooted, so I don't need to rehydrate it in water. It looks super healthy. I inspected the leaves and I can't see any signs of pests. So I'm gonna take the risk, such a risk taker, and I'll just pop it straight into my IKEA cabinet. And yeah, I just hope that there wasn't anything nasty in here. I'm gonna give it a little clip. So these are these clips from Ikea that fit perfectly with the clipboard. I like the clipboard, the little grid. Oh, it's gonna get the prime position up here. Oh my god, look how cute it is! All right, fingers crossed. Alrighty, and we're back. It's been two weeks since I popped this into my IKEA cabinet. Um, and hang on, this leaf over here was the one that it was just pushing out. So it's kind of like a really nice half half. And there's already another leaf unfurling as we speak. So I think it's time for me to actually investigate what's going on in here. And I actually just watered that today. So uh, it's pretty wet in here. But wet moss is really easy to remove. So that's a better solution than keeping it really dry when trying to free it up. So I'm just trying to free all of the roots from the moss. If it's a larger plant, I'm usually not that delicate but because this plant is so tiny. Maybe I should have waited a little longer. Anyway, too late now. All right, I think that's good enough. Look at this. Teeny tiny C3 pod, it's so cute. Uh, I saw this at AJ's randomly. It was just like on this pile of like uh, pods. And I was like, AJ, what is that? I need it ASAP. I'm gonna give her a mix that is similar um, to the water retention of moss. So I'm gonna use tree fern fiber because it's like still a really small plant with really small roots. Like I can't, I can't give her a really chunky aeroid mix out of the sudden. Huh? But there is a little bit of bark in here and there's a little bit of perlite in here just to give it a little bit of aeration. And I should really do this over here. And I'm not going to compress this at all. I'm just going to flake it over here. It can stay in here for a little while, like at least a month or two. And then once I have visibility of some roots on the outside, I can start giving it, or I can pop it into a, a regular 10 centimeter pot that I usually start my plants off with. All right, tiny pot, but I still ended up getting really messy and we will check in when there's something for me to update you on. See you soon. And we're back. It's been exactly one month and my Florida beauty has grown quite nicely. So I just wanted to give you a really quick update. I'm still in no position to repot it again or put it on a pole. I just want to keep doing, I just, I just want to leave it as it is. It's happy, so let's not disturb it. But I really wanted to show you because it's actually exceeded my expectations so far. So I'm pretty sure this would have been the last leaf that unfurled when I got it, which means it has then had this leaf as well as this beautiful half half and now this leaf. Now there is already the next one coming. See this little thing sticking out? I am however a bit concerned that it's going full variegated. It's getting progressively more and more variegated. So let's see. But there's also some root growth. Is this showing? There some small roots. They're finding their way into the pot. So yeah, she's happy and I'll put her back into the IKEA cabinet because whatever I'm doing is clearly working. Alrighty, and we are back. It has only been three weeks since the last update, but it is growing so well and so quickly. I wanted to update you. Let me come closer. Is it focusing? I think so. So first of all, the first leaf or like the last leaf that it came with was this one over here. Hello, focus. This leaf over here, it has since grown one, 
two, three, four, five. This is really not wanting to work. Five, and it's working on its sixth one over here already. And can you also see all of these roots? Can you see all of these cute little roots? And you can also see some roots within the pot itself. So it's honestly so small. I need to bring it so close and then the camera has a hard time focusing. But I couldn't be happier with the growth that this plant has uh, produced so far. And given that all of these cute little roots are there, I just have, I'm having a really hard time looking at all of these roots and not giving it a moss pole. So I wanna give it a moss pole straight away. You can also see it wants to climb, right? You see how it kind of grows upright? Definitely wants to climb, so I think this plant is really gonna be taken to the next level if I provide it with a moss pole now. So let's do it. I wanna give it a small grow vertical prop, mini, mini prop I think they're called. Um, and it's the exact same process that I've done with my El Choco as well. I put it on one of these first and then once I kind of outgrew that one, I then just cut out this bit in a bigger moss pole and just slid it in there. So that's gonna be the goal over here as well. So yeah, if I notice that something is working really well, why not just repeat it again? That's, you know, I mean, it's nice to sometimes try new things out as well, for sure. But, Ooh. why risk something going wrong if I know that I have a good approach already. I want it to be sufficient moss in here but I don't want it to be too dense uh, because roots like aeration specifically given that I grow this inside my IKEA cabinet. Um, I'm not worried about the moss pole drying out because it's like 99% humidity in there. Now another reason ooh, why I like to use these smaller moss poles because normally I like to set up my plants on a, good, on a, on a big moss pole from the beginning right? And, uh, so that there's less effort involved and they can just climb up that moss pole uh, without me having to constantly upgrade the moss pole or extend it or something like that. But it is still winter and it is not, it's definitely getting, it is winter, winter is pretty mild, but it, it is definitely getting warmer during the day. It can go upwards of 20 degrees uh, quite easily uh, these days, but uh, at nighttime it still goes down to like seven or eight degrees, which is quite cold, which means that it's just not good, not the greatest conditions outside of my cabinet at the moment. And... I sound like a broken record, but ultimately the conditions that you grow your plants in will set the growth potential and then the care is just going to realize that potential. So to give this plant the best chances of maturing and growing up and growing more leaves as quickly as possible, I want to give it the best conditions as possible. And during winter, the best conditions are within my IKEA cabinet. So I want to keep it in there. Right? I mean, right at this stage, it's showing that whatever I grow in the IKEA cabinet is absolutely thriving, whereas everything outside of the cabinet is like a little meh. Of course, some of the larger plants that are, that are used to the meh conditions outside the cabinet, they're perfectly fine. I actually have my Splendid, my Glorious, and my Adansonia currently blooming. So they're obviously happy, but they've been used to these conditions, whereas this plant has not been used to the shittier conditions outside the cabinet and I don't necessarily want it to get used to these conditions right now. In a month or a month and a half when it's nicer outside or when it's nicer and warmer outside the cabinet again, uh, then I reckon I'm in a good position to transition some of my plants from the cabinet into my uh, normal open space. Uh, I'll do that with my El Choco and so on as well, for example. But right now I'm trying to keep as many plants inside the cabinet as I can. Now the main limitation I've got within my cabinet is size. It's really packed at the moment and I'm getting more plants shipped Right? So I need to make sure that ooh, I need to make sure that um, I'm keeping it as small as possible. Right, I bring that a bit closer. I hope you can see some of the roots that I've grown. Now let me choose which side to put the moss pole on. I'm going to choose the side that has the most roots at the moment. Or oh, no, I'm going to choose which, which way. 
Okay, yes, I'm gonna choose the side that has the most roots at the moment. So like this. And then I pop this in here. And then I'm just gonna fill in the rest with aeroid mix. I don't want to disturb the root system too much. Actually, I should have really filled this in with aeroid mix first. Okay, that's good enough. Love this little pot, I'll definitely keep that, it's so cute. Now the last thing, I've got these little pieces of wire that I just bent into a U shape and I'll take it and I'll pin my plant to the moss pole. Now it doesn't need that, it will find its way into the moss pole regardless, but I'm just giving it an easier time. I'm bringing the roots slightly closer to the moss pole so that they can find their way into the moss pole as soon as possible. And the leaves will kind of readjust uh, now as well. Okay, there we go. And I will touch base with you when there's an update. Alrighty, and we are back. It's been about three weeks that I potted this plant on its grow vertical pole and it's been about three months overall since I received this plant in the mail. So I thought let's have a close up look um, and see what's happening. So that was the latest leaf and unfortunately it's purely variegated but YOLO. What I actually want to do is I kind of want to move this leaf to this side because see how this plant is now growing via caterpillar. This is the caterpillar with the new leaf. I want this to make contact with the pole and the leaf was kind of in the way. So this should go as close as possible to the pole so that the roots can start growing into the moss pole. I hope that is okay visible on the camera. Here are roots going into the pole and you can already see them coming out here. Is this going to focus ever? Here. You can see the first root coming through. Sorry AJ, AJ always hates it when I don't take the stickers off. You can still see some more root growth over here. But overall, it didn't seem to have gone through any shock as part of the repot. So yeah, let's just hope that the next leaf has some nice marbling again like this because we don't want just fully green or like fully yellow or white or whatever you want to call this. So yeah, I'll just pop it back in there and just got to stay patient. And we are back. It has been two months since the last clip and to be honest, not all too much has happened. Let me give you a close up. So, these leaves are all new since the last video and they're really, really beautiful. I mean, I love this one and I love this one as well. It's a little deformed at the top, not sure why, but the variegation and the pattern is beautiful. Not too sure if it had this one in the middle already. But what happened since the last time is it actually dropped a lot of leaves and I'm not entirely sure why. It could be because a lot of these bottom leaves were also fully variegated. But it has grown some healthy roots down here. I hope this is gonna focus, yep. And you can see there's more roots coming out of the stem wanting to go into the pole. So sometimes I just take a little piece of wire and kind of just push it in there to get, get the stem closer to the pole. So yeah, ultimately not all too much has happened. Again, one thing I don't appreciate about growing a lot of my plants in the IKEA cabinet is that the leaves are pointing upwards because that's where the light is coming from. I think it would be much nicer if they point forward, but that will change as soon as I take it out of the IKEA cabinet. Not too much update. Honestly, the conditions haven't even changed. I'm not too sure what exactly happened for it to stop growing that fast, but it's still growing, it's still happy, so I'm not too fast. I have to admit, I have been really slack with the updates. So the last update was at the end of October. It's now middle of March. So 
a good four and a half months or so. So apologies for that. I swear I took an update somewhere in those four and a half months, but I can't find the footage. So, well, it is what it is. But this is what the plant looks like now. Um, so really good. I think the last one you would have seen is probably this one over here. So we've had some decent leaves in between. We've had this beautiful like almost half half. We had one that was super super variegated. We had one that was not so variegated and then this one to be honest just looking at this over here it looks like thrips damage and I've just noticed that. I know that some of the other plants in my cabinet had some sort of thrips issues as well but not like an issue issue just a little bit. So there is a new leaf coming out over here so let's just see if that shows any thrips damage or not or if the thrips are just going to eat the whole thing I don't know I don't think I've treated this plant to be honest I think there was what was the plant there was one plant in my cabinet that had thrips or was it spider mites no it was thrips and then thorium had thrips and I used comfortor spray I don't think I treated this one anyway that is what it is it's growing can't be all too bad now also I just wanted to show you the moss pile decent root system within the moss pile and also the first roots actually pushing up the top of the moss palm. So I reckon I'll let this plant unfurl this latest leaf and then it is spreading a little bit too much for my IKEA cabinet as well. I'll probably then upgrade it to a larger pole and also move it out of my IKEA cabinet and well, I'll take you along but I think I'll just let this leaf uh, develop and yeah also I don't have time today <laughs> to do that so it works um alrighty so I'll see you soonish hello everybody it's been one month since the last update and we are um I think in month 10 of this overall project of growing this Florida beauty and I should have really gotten on top of it a little while earlier but better late than never we got to do something with this plant it is getting too large for my IKEA cabinet um, and as part of giving it a new home I would also love to give it a larger pot and a pole extension so today is going to be some substantial happenings so let me show you everything first and really annoying I get this direct sun coming in so I hope it's not too glary but you should see lots and lots of roots pushing up against the back of this pole so a majority of the roots within would be within the pole there are some decent roots within the pot as well of course so happy days you can see that this plant I don't know if you can see this on my viewfinder it's very hard you can see that this plant is thoroughly rooted into the pole and you can see the transformation in leaf shape from or from this to I think uh, this is the latest leaf over here very pretty and I'm very happy with the level of variegation I had some more yellow ones I had some more green ones um, I had even some half half ones over here so very very happy with the progress overall Hello my darling, are you the star of the show? I hope the sunlight exposure is fine. It's now that we're going into winter, the sun is just coming so much deeper into the room. Um, usually it's not the best to film in, but we gotta get this done. I've been procrastinating for a long time now and I really need to give this plant a, a new home um, to really make it thrive further because I think it's just not it's, because it's so large, it's pushing up against the front wall of the cab cabinet, basically, the window. So it's not really actually getting the light uh, that well anymore. Excuse me, mister. Would you mind vacating the table? I know, I did find the biggest table I could find, didn't I? Hmm? You want to be the star of the show? You can look, you can sniff, but you cannot eat. Hey, I said you cannot eat. Brad, by the way, is actually not really interested in my plants at all. He is only interested in them when he feels slightly jealous of the attention that I give them. Come on, do you want to go here maybe? Come on, you can lie here. Go here. This is a good spot for you. Whee! Good boy. All right, I think today 
we need to do a couple of things. Let me get my stuff ready maybe, that would help. Definitely feel like I'm gonna be slightly unorganized today, but it's not a bad thing. Looks good, don't have any desire to like clean it up any further or whatever, because what we're actually gonna do is something that I've done with my El Choco before, is we are going to upgrade the moss pole. This plant and the pole at this stage, they're one unit, right? Like I don't differentiate between the plant and the moss pole. They are thoroughly interconnected. I mean, you've seen that root system. So for me to upgrade this plant to a bigger pole, I'm not actually taking it off the pole. I'm just, you'll see, I'll, I'll slide it into a bigger pole. If that makes sense. Anyway, you'll, you'll see in a sec. Now, this plant has been really easy going. I haven't really done much for it because it lives in my IKEA cabinet and the IKEA cabinet is such a high humidity environment. Hang on, I like this moment. I'm gonna peel, I'm gonna peel this off. Oh, look at that. Maybe now you can see the roots a little bit better. Oh, this bloody sun. Yeah, less reflection now. Huh? So you can really see the moss pole being an extension of the root system and taking roots and then funneling them into the pot. Oh, I forgot what I was talking about. Oh yeah, because it's in a high humidity environment, uh, I do very, very little for it. I every now and then go in with a spray bottle and just spray the top of the moss pole and let the water drip through. But because it's plastic backed and in the high humidity environment, this basically never dries out. I reckon I could get away watering this once, uh, once a fortnight, so once every two weeks. Um, but realistically, I probably water it once every week or so, but just a little bit, just spray a little bit more so it never really dries out. But if I would water it thoroughly, I reckon once a fortnight would be uh, sufficient and that's just because of the plastic backing and the high humidity environment. If I would have that on a pole that's not plastic backed in a really dry environment I might have to water this every five days or so. Right? So it really depends, there is no hard and fast rule. So I do not want to break any of this apart, I want to keep this exactly as it is. This is one unit. What I want to do though, I want to take this and kind of slide it into here and then fill in the gaps with more moss. So I'm gonna cut out the exact wire. So it's one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Okay, so four times 22. That's easy, that's my mom's birthday. And I cut out the bits. Now I just need to reconnect all of this using some cable ties. So I'm really just sliding this into here where I just cut out the mesh. Huh? So, the drop. And now I'm just cable tying this. Doesn't need to be done in all too many spots, just a few here and there until I feel like this is somewhat secure. Okay, after I cut the cable ties, I always twist them inside because the sharp edges could hurt some of the newly developing leaves. Ta-da, here we go. Now this plant is also kind of a little bit away from the pole. Now I wanna use a cable tie to just get it a little bit closer, but at the same time, I don't wanna like um, squish any of the existing roots. So I need to be careful with that, but I don't like how unstable it kind of looks on the pole. I know it obviously has a lot of root system, but I'm worried that if I would shake this, for example, which is certainly the plan eventually, that I would kind of just shake the plant, like the, that the roots would rip. That makes sense? So I'm gonna give this a little extra support here by just cable tying the plant to the pole. Okay. Now I'm just gonna fill in the gaps with more moss. Stick it in from the bottom and use my trusted chopstick again to kind of just poke it in place until I'm happy. I think a chopstick is one of the most useful gardening tools, honestly. Now as part of this repot, the plant will also move out of the IKEA cabinet because it will now, actually I think it will move out of the cabinet. I'll see if it fits at the bottom of the cabinet maybe a little bit better, but I think it's time just because this plant does have quite lengthy -ish petioles. So um, we'll see how we go, but 
the Florida in general, I don't think it really needs the high humidity environment in the IKEA cabinet. Um, it was just easy and convenient for me to grow it in there and I start all of my small plants. But now that it has a little bit of maturity, um, I don't think it will be a big issue moving it out of the IKEA cabinet. However, we are going into winter over here, so it's technically not the right time. But when we're growing indoors, uh, the conditions indoors are okay-ish year-round, right? I heat my house for my own sake, so because I like to have the heating on and the plants obviously get that temperature as well. It can then, as a result, get quite dryish. but um, again, I don't think this one really minds drier humidity. Um, I just need to water the moss pile more frequently, I suppose. But I also don't think this really minds having the moss pile dry out a little bit more if I compare that to like a velvet philodendron, for example. So I'm not super fussed about this plant. I think this is actually, I've noticed specifically with the ghost, not so much with the beauty, but with the ghost, I really noticed it doesn't actually like a really high humidity environment. It actually prefers my ambient room, temp uh, room temperature and humidity more. My ambient room humidity is around 60% though. Um, and it's in my plant room that has a whole bunch of moss piles and those moss piles in general just give the whole area, the whole room a bit of a humidity boost. But obviously, to give the room a bit of a humidity boost, the water needs to evaporate, which means the piles dry out a bit quicker. Here we are, happy days. I filled this pole quite a lot. You can see it's kind of bulging out a little bit because ultimately, the more room for roots, the more potential for this plant. And uh, it is not the fastest climber. I mean, you've seen, well, we're 10 months into this process and it hasn't climbed all too far. So I don't think I'm gonna have to repot this. Um, I, I don't think it's gonna outgrow its pole anytime soon. So yeah, have to get rid of this bottom leaf. It's gonna not, it's not gonna make it. It's gonna be stuck in the pot, but just one of them. I put it all the way to the bottom of the pole and now I'm going to give it some aeroid mix. Tutorial for my aeroid mix is always linked in the description as well as a link to these Grow Vertical Moss Poles as well and I do have a discount code and Tim ships internationally. But at the end of the day it's really just a wire mesh with a plastic backing and you can easily get creative and um, kind of come up with a solution yourself. I've seen people you make them from repurposed juice bottles or placemats or whatnot, you know? As long as the, basically the principle here is that the plastic is gonna ensure that there's more water retention. That's it then, right? Let's peel off the sticker so AJ doesn't get angry at me. There you go. That is it. I'm going to give this some water and I'm going to use my GT Foliage Focus, which is also linked in the description. And we'll see each other at the very latest in about two months time when this 12 months transformation is over. But if there's anything thrilling happening in between, um, I'll make sure to check in with you. See you soon. Alrighty. Thank you so much, Jan from the past. Here we are, it's been 12 months. Now, a couple of things I wanna address before we look at the plant in a little bit more detail. First of all, I think two, well, hang on. Now, maybe, I don't know, I don't remember how many months ago that was, but a few months ago, I said to you that I think there's a bit of thrips damage. Uh, let me show you that. So this was the last leaf in question over here, and you can see it's kind of a little bit deformed. The subsequent leaf after that is this one over here, which is perfectly fine, followed by this beautiful leaf over here, and then this leaf over here just unfurled this week. So it's got a bit of inflating to do, but it shows beautiful variegation and beautiful mature features. What I did do is I gave it a nice spray of Comfortor spray. Um, just one application was sufficient and I haven't seen any further damage since. I can't confirm that it was thrips, I haven't seen any, but just from the deformation of the leaf, um, I think it, that was it. Uh, a few plants in my cabinet had thrips, but one of the Comfidor spray applications seemed to have done the trick and no subsequent leaves have shown any sort of damage. So that's good, but it set back the plant a little bit. Um, 
But yeah, not... I don't know. I feel like I'm pretty relaxed on the whole pest thing, right? Like I don't freak out about it anymore. I th Most of the times, like my plants seem to kind of cope with pest issues themselves. If your plants are happy and healthy, they usually can, you know, can kind of cope with it a little bit. Of course, if your plants are weak, then they are more susceptible to, you know, absolutely getting destroyed by pests. They can't really fight back. So I don't know, I feel like most of the times these issues kind of sort themselves out, but when I do see something like that, I just quickly do a comforter spray and then, you know, one application and it seems to be just fine. So I'm, I'm, I'm not ready to freak out about pests or potential signs of pests and then freak out. I'm kind of pretty chilled about it. I just accept it as a constant. I accept it as something that can always go wrong. And I suppose that's, you know, comes with the nature of growing plants, you know, it is what it is. Anyway, so I wanted to address that one first. Now, the other thing I wanted to address while we are here is after I repotted it to the larger pole and I put it outside of the IKEA cabinet, I also dropped the plant by accident. I kind of just elbowed it off my desk. It went flying and two really beautiful leaves, like around about the size of this, I think, uh, just completely snapped off. So things go wrong, you know, uh, sometimes... Actually, I hardly ever drop or hardly ever have plants falling. I think people think my plants are just falling left, right and center because they're so tall. It actually hardly ever happens. And it happened to a plant that isn't even top heavy at all. This is very bottom heavy. Uh, and it was really just me being negligent or me being a bit careless. Um, again, shit happens and it is what it is. Right? Now, since the last update, the plant has gotten used to my ambient temperatures. And let me just put a little screenshot of those in here. So this over here is a screenshot of the average temperature and humidity in my office versus the average temperature and humidity in my IKEA cabinet. So over the last two months, it went from this environment into this environment and it's just fine. And I think that is, due to a couple of reasons. First of all, I don't think this Florida Beauty ever needed the really, really high humidity uh, conditions that I had to offer it in the IKEA cabinet. It's not that fast anyway. So I think these conditions actually suit the plant in itself better. Um, and then secondly, these conditions are still very high, right? These are, this is still a decent humidity for, uh, for, an, for just an open ambient uh, room, right? All right, that's all I really have to say about the last couple of months. So let's talk about what I learned about this plant in total. And by the way, I maybe should have told you before in case I look or sound a bit weird, I'm actually a bit sick uh, at the moment. Haven't left the house in three days and I'm going a bit stir crazy. So I was like, I need to film something. I need to do something, even if uh, I might not be the most camera ready today. <laughs> uh, anyway, so what have I learned about this plant? Well, let's start off with what I just addressed. I don't think this is a plant that really requires a super high humidity environment. Ambient humidity and temperatures should be perfectly fine. But then again, my ambient temperatures and humidity are pretty optimal still. Um, but from what I've seen on the internet, I think the Floridas, the beauty, the ghost and so on, they seem to be okay with lower humidity. And I also think they are more tolerant to having the pole dry out a little bit more if I compare that to like a philodendron vericosum, for example. So overall, I think when it comes to conditions, this is not necessarily a plant that really requires the best possible conditions, making it a fairly good indoor plant for people to consider. These two leaves over here have only grown with um, natural light uh, and I'm, they're getting natural light from a south facing window. Uh, south is the worst exposure in the southern hemisphere and we're going into winter. So we have the least light available and then the worst window uh, in the house. And yet they're still growing just fine. So I think it's also not a super, super light demanding plant. So, but again, I can only speak from the conditions that I've grown in. Obviously I can't speak about conditions that I haven't grown them in and I 
To be fair, I just don't have really terrible conditions available, so I can't really make a call on that. Now, it's definitely a climber, but I do think that I probably gave it a moss pole fairly early. I don't think I needed to give it a moss pole at the time I gave it the moss pole. I don't know if it was a result of me giving it the moss pole and repotting it that a lot of the leaves dropped, if it was just maybe shock or I'm not too sure what it was, but it was growing so well at the beginning of the video. I should have probably just done nothing about it for a little while longer, have it establish a few more leaves and then eventually pop it on the moss pole. I don't think optimizing the root system was really required at that stage because it was growing just fine and it didn't out, it hasn't outgrown the teeny tiny pot back then. So I think in hindsight something I learned is like I don't think I really need to rush this plant up a pole, uh, specifically the ones that grow with fairly short internodal spacing anyway, right? So that one or a ghost or um, like a ring of fire or something like that, you know, like I think I'm going to be a little more patient in providing it with a pole. Not saying it's the wrong thing to do, but I don't think it necessarily had a really positive impact on it that would confirm to me that that was the right thing to do. But I think giving it a smaller pole and then eventually upgrading it to a larger pole really makes sense for plants that are small climbers like this one. So that's definitely something I'd do again. I'd probably just delay all of it a little bit. Something different that I haven't experienced all too often before is the concept of this plant not really finding its way up the moss pole that nicely. It's kind of trying to miss the moss pole. I'm not 100% sure on the why, but you know what? It doesn't really matter. What I do know though is that I don't like it. So I'm gonna use a cable tie to bring this a bit closer. Now with the cable tie, I need to be careful because I don't wanna make it too tight to kind of suffocate the stem. I wanna give it a little bit of room to still breathe. This is my normal air mix. I provide GT foliage focus in a weak dilution with every watering. So the same principles that I've always applied. So nothing really super crazy about this plant that is out of the ordinary or that is so different to any of the other plants I have grown before, um, apart from probably my recommendation to just hold off on the moss pole a little bit longer due to the short internodal spacing. I think there's really two main lessons over here from, for, for me personally at least. Getting some really, really small tissue culture plants is actually a really cost effective way of getting new plants into your collection and initially when you get them they also don't take up too much space. So it's not a huge space commitment straight away. Like the plant kind of grows and hopefully as the plant grows you'll end up making space for it one by one. But you're not like, oh my god, suddenly you buy this uh, established plant with ginormous petioles and you don't know where to put it. Um, so I definitely really enjoy that approach of getting a really small plant and that is the most fascinating part to me. I love seeing the plant grow, I love seeing the plant change in leaf shape. Um, with this one as well it's really nice to see kind of like oh how much variegation am I gonna get and it seems to be like a really he really healthy plant that doesn't seem to go too variegated too quickly right we've had some almost fully variegated leaves that said goodbye by now but they always come back with a green leaf or a half half or a nice mottled leaf so from a variegation perspective I really enjoy this plant the second thing that I really learned and I, to be honest I only learned that when I looked back at my own footage I did not remember this plant and I having such a roller coaster of a ride like I honestly forgot um, and it's probably because I have so many plants as well right but there was times when it was thriving then it was definitely kind of going backwards a little bit and dropped a lot of leaves without any like major finding then it went then then went really good again then it had some thrips then I dropped it then it grew again and so on so there was a lot of back and forths in that one year I also moved house in between that year uh, it had to move from the IKEA cabinet into ambient room temperatures instead it had two repots and a moss pole upgrade so I'll, and while I was in the IKEA cabinet I actually also completely changed the IKEA cabinet setup around including the lights and everything so this plant has gone through a lot of change this plant has gone through a lot of issues or challenges let's say and yet at the end of 12 months this teeny tiny plant still grew into something decent right so I'm actually really impressed with the resilience of this plant but what I also wanted to show is that you know like all of these ups and downs and you know it's normal 
things happen. It's not a linear trajectory. It's not just the plant keeps getting better and better and better no matter what you do. We are living, we're working with living organisms and things going wrong is just part of it. You're, I'm just a human. Uh, yes, I can drop a plant or mess something up or forget a watering and as a result of that, maybe the plant drops a few leaves and so on. That is also perfectly fine, but it's never the end of the world. These plants have an innate desire to live and as long as the conditions are at the very least okay, the plant will come back. So I just want to show you one little thing close up because I really like this. Now that the plant is more mature, you can really see some nice red ruffled petioles almost so really nice anyway i can feel my brain hurting from the light that i put on to film so i think it's time for me to close my eyes again but i really wanted to stay true to the you know 12 month transformation and it just came up this week so gotta do what you gotta do no if you watch this whole video, I would love for you to leave a roller coaster emoji in the comment section. Please like it, please share it. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell as well so you don't miss out on any future videos. Really appreciate your support and I'll see you next time around. Bye.